Would you go into Airbnb right now? And number two, if you did, what would you do to differentiate yourself? Something like that. Would I, yeah, so would I get in? Um... Hey, everyone. Welcome back to Mark Loeffler Experience. Good friend and uh, sometimes collaborator, Andrew Hines, back on the show. And we're going to be talking about the death of Airbnb. Yeah. Is Airbnb dying? Is it gone? Like, is it finito? Is it, should we sell our shares? What's going on? That's a really tough question to answer. I've just, like, we both just been seeing these charts flying around. Well, yeah, that, so that it's like, it, it's... Bookings are down, right? It, yeah, so it's, it's trending if you haven't followed yeah. it. But there's, I don't know, CNN, Market Watch has it yeah. on. Reddit has its own subreddit now yeah. on it. But yeah, it's, it's a chart that's coming on and we'll get that posted up here. What's the issue? Is it that prices are down or number of bookings are down? So revenue is down 50% in some of the top revenue. markets. Okay. So overall revenue. So Airbnb collapse, top yeah. 10 cities. <laughs> top 10 cities. Yes, I saw this one. Yeah, this was on Twitter. This has been floating around the Twitter. So 40, 46, 25 in Austin, Texas last year. 24, 91 this year. This is the average rent for the unit in the month. Average rent for unit in the month. Right. So that could be a factor of just too many units. Well, so I think it's a bunch of different things. Yeah, it's got to be a a few things. So I did look it up and they said basically, yes, there's more listings. Mm -hmm. There are more. um, So again, it's the same thing with rentals in Ontario that I keep going on about is, of course, rents are going to keep going up because there's more demand. Yeah. And supply isn't increasing. Right. So basically what happened in the short-term rental markets, at least these markets, is that people got into it, bought properties, Mm -hmm. cheap interest rates, put it out there. And so they're like, oh, I can get that much revenue. Mm -hmm. And like, there's no barrier to entry. What's what's the barrier to entry on a short-term rental? Just buying the furniture. Buying the furniture, good pictures, and uh, Bob's your uncle, right? Yeah. So I would suspect, I mean, you know, everybody and their dog was getting into Airbnb and especially in the States, like, because they knew, I mean, in Canada, there was a lot of sentiment that it wasn't really going to work because the municipalities kept shutting it down. Yeah. But in the States, that that's not the, the pattern. You can just basically go into any of these cities oh. and rent out. And you didn't even need to buy a house. Yeah, you can do arbitrage. That's a huge thing. There's so many people out there doing that. So many people doing yeah. arbitrage. And I did talk to one of the big arbitragers, and they said this is why they got out of the um, standard market type thing. And they went high end with everything. Mm-hmm. If they were doing high end, they wouldn't touch it. Okay. So I don't know if that's the difference here or not. I mean, yeah. if... Well, if you're blending in. And you know there's a whole bunch more supply coming into your market. Like if you blend in, you're pretty much screwed. Like yeah. you're you're just gonna you're a commodity and the commodity has a commodity price. Well, and, and yeah. it's a race to the bottom. Yeah. It's like, okay, I wanna have it filled. Yeah. I'll take okay, tw- I'll, I'll take I'll less. Go ten, twenty dollars yeah. less than the, the other guy. That's and why then- I'm just pained by lowering prices on Airbnb. I, I generally uh, don't want to. Like me and Zach uh, disagree on this, my one of my business partners. Because, I'll, and, I'll and let this it happen I early to on. To you because yeah, you have a decent size Airbnb yeah. business. Yeah. I'll let it happen early on. Like it, when we launch a new listing, it's whatever it takes to get people in early. But I mean, to me, it, it makes no sense to book a low price discounted rate for two months out. But if, if Airbnb's algorithm is going to push me more, if I price a certain way, then I'll do that well, just to can, get going. You can do daily pricing. So yeah, for this yeah. weekend, you can yeah. price it at price $80. It higher. Well, Airbnb does this thing. If you do your first three bookings, like if you, if you allow the promotion, they'll promote you. Yes. Yeah. So we will do that. Of and course, sometimes it's like painful. Days. The dates they pick, like they pick a long weekend. I'm like, ah, oh, we could have got way more for that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, just you do what you got to do when you're first listing. But generally speaking, no, I if I'm not getting booked, then I'm thinking, OK, what do I need to spend on this to make it better? How do I need to execute? What do we need to do? Uh, and, and that's you. For your business. I think yeah. your business is different, right? Yeah. Like you are seasonal rental. But even camping. a house, even a house you can improve. Yeah, there's things you can do. Like you've had John on your show. Yeah. You know, he'll point out that you could do in Arizona, like Phoenix. He liked to do putting greens in the backyard. You know, you have a basketball hoop. Uh, you you make your outdoor space intentional. You you spend the money on the landscape, yeah, the the experience. Yeah, and the experience. Well, it's like your ship yeah. your shipwreck, your scuba yeah. diving. Yeah, thing, we have right? a trailer. Yeah, for anyone who didn't hear the podcast, we have a trailer that's that's called the shipwreck, and it looks like it's got a shipwreck mural and it's shipwreck themed. Uh, yeah, we're giving people experience. Yeah. yeah. You make it Instagram worthy. They're posting yeah. on Instagram right. or whatever that they're staying yeah. at your place and look how much fun we're having. Yeah, we're yeah. playing bocce. We're doing, we're putting. We're, yeah. and then you get the guys who are going to come on a golf trip or something, right? Or, yeah. or whatever that is, right? So you're not, you're not lumped in with the other. Yeah. You're not a commodity. You can't be a commodity. You got to have that competitive advantage, that competitive uh, differentiation. If you feel yourself becoming a commodity, then it's time to reflect yeah. and, uh, and think, what can I do differently? All right. So let's do two things here. Yeah. So I'm a current Airbnb 
person, which I know I, in, in Hamilton, they shut it all down, right? Yeah. Oh, well, you can only are, do it if it's your primary residence for yeah, I don't, I didn't ever, Like all the other municipalities, pretty yeah. much. Um, so they shut it down. Yeah. And so lots of people got out of the game there. Mm-hmm. And by the way, you can't find a hotel room in Hamilton right now. And they've jacked up the rates, number one. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm sure the hotels loved it. This, this is just a sidebar yeah. to that. You have governmental risk. You have uh, policy risk. Yeah. You have risk of, okay, people are traveling less. Mm-hmm more people getting into the market. So how do you, number one, would you go into Airbnb right now? And number two, if you did, what would you do to differentiate yourself? That's a good question. Uh, I mean, obviously we're in it and we we expand in it, but we're competitive on our zoning. You know, all these like bylaws that affect like what you can do with Airbnb, like they don't even apply to us. Like our zoning allows us to serve the traveling public. So immediately excluded. Not not to say that the bylaw didn't come after us and try to apply it to us. I'm like, it says right here in your bylaw, this doesn't apply. We went back and forth three times and then the conversation- Just Airbnb. They don't care that you rent on your own website. They just don't want Airbnb. Right? Uh, they, 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 they caught it on Airbnb. They're like, have this taken down in three days. And we went back and forth and then the conversation went away. Uh, it was re- there was a witch hunt there. I don't know why there was a witch hunt, but anyways, new owners. Yeah, we were out of towners. I uh, flexed yeah, your muscle. Yeah, whatever hey, it was. Look at me. I puff up I my know. chest. Must have been something like that. Would I, yeah. So would I get in? Uh, I, I would absolutely. I'd be picking strategic locations where I could create a great experience. I'd make sure that my photos are a billion times better than everybody else's. The amenities I offer are better than everybody else's, or at least more obvious, mm-hmm. right? Because, uh, you know, two places might have a fire pit and a basketball court, but one of them, you know, has a picture of a guy shooting hoops and the other one doesn't. The one with a, a picture of the guy shooting hoops, like having models in your photos makes a difference. Yeah. And, you know, just things like that. And it's it's not like any one of these things does the whole the whole difference. But when you combine all these factors, now all of a sudden you're getting $15,000 in bookings on a tent. Yeah. Uh, like on our, our sites, like, which I find is crazy. It's I have to like shake myself a little bit. Is that real? <laughs> well, I, it's yeah. funny because even talking to municipalities have shut it down, but then yeah. you got cottage country and I've talked to people in cottage yeah. country and their bookings are all down. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I've heard the same. And I think a lot of that is not so much the recession fears, but a lot of the return to quote unquote normalcy and people going back and traveling overseas and spending big money on big vacations. I can just say like activities are back too. Yeah. Like my kid is playing ball, baseball five times a week. So it stops you from going away. Like, what am I going to do? Like I have limited time and it's like, okay. uh. And so many people jumped in in the glory of the lockdowns because of the jacked up rates and what everyone was making. Yeah. No, nothing, else nothing else to do. Nothing else to do. There right. was no baseball yeah. going on. There was no like. But this is activities. why the investors flocked to it because the numbers. It was a skewed, a skewed result, and I'm guilty of that too. We saw what they could make. But I wanted to pick something scalable. Uh, you know, return to quote unquote normalcy. I guess I I did factor that in, and uh, I just figured you know one way or another we're going to look like a pretty attractive option being Tobermory centric. And uh, you know, there's a lot of buzz about Tobermory. There's a lot of uh, tourism there. That's not going away completely. Well, it's, it's been there for yeah. 100 years. Yeah. Like, it's not going anywhere. Like, people it want started to, take- to get traction, though, because like Blog TO was talking about it, all those pictures of the grotto. And, and you can also create your own market, too, right? Yeah. Uh, I know people who, who openly and outwardly market to southwestern Ontario and to the Golden Horseshoe for winter vacations, things like that. Hey, you know, want to get away for the weekend? Yeah, you know, come, come on up to our cottage. Come, yeah, exactly. Like come, you can grow your business yeah. like that. Well, I mean, it's still huge, right? Yeah. Like the snowmobile industry and, yeah. and outdoor in, in yeah. the winter time. So that's what we're thinking with the resort. One of the big things we liked about the one we bought was you can run year round and we can throw a hot tub up there. And now all of a sudden there's a potential to double our revenue and, you know, run year round. Yeah, sauna. You can do a sauna, yes. Yeah, sauna, yeah. You think it's better than a hot tub? Easier than a hot tub. Easier. Way easier. Easier. Hot tubs are just. We got to treat them. We have a we have a good cleaning contractor. I'm sure she'd have no issue. Checking I would them. just do both. But, uh, do uh, yeah, doing both is even better with some string lights and a fence around it. Yeah, uh, and all of a sudden you've got something you can take incredible photos of. Now you're a spa. Yeah. Now you're basically <laughs> a spa. Certainly a getaway. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, at the end of the day, yes. Airbnb, you're thinking, or short-term rentals. Let's just say short-term rentals. Yeah. Right? Because it's, it's. I'm sure it's across all boards, right? Mm. Uh, just be more unique, right? Yeah, you have to differentiate yourself. I think that's like, no matter what, you're going to have that ebb and flow in any market. Uh, a bunch of people get in, a bunch of people get out. These people, they weren't educated about getting in. It, you know, it was the same thing in the flipping market, in the wholesaling market. Like we saw all these changes happen. The ones that were, that were fundamental based they, they survive it. Yeah. Even if they pause for a bit, they come out. And then the ones that didn't have fundamentals are now, you know, working in an entirely different industry. 
And I think that you'll see the same thing in Airbnb. It'll naturally correct back to an equilibrium that makes sense. Because yep. you have all these people flying in. Well, now all the ones that are thinking about jumping in are probably second guessing it. Right. And it come, it'll come back to some sort of equilibrium and uh, prices will normalize and you know, it'll, it'll be all right. <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I, I think it's almost a good thing for, for sophisticated investors to just, I hate hypey markets. Like yeah. I, I want stable markets where I can just do my thing. Yeah. I, yeah. I just want, yeah, I, yeah. normal, right? Yeah. Like, oh, nobody's really talking about it. Let's just yeah. go do it. We'll do our thing. Yeah. So like Edmonton two years ago. Yeah. Now it's hypey. Yeah, all the hype there. It's like, yeah. oh, maybe I'll just sell everything. Just hang on. Yeah. It, <laughs> benefit from the hype, right? If it's there, I guess, like just, yeah. transition. But I mean, it feels like everywhere is just shooting up in price. And it's hard to imagine Canada like becoming more affordable for the average Canadian, right? I, I don't see it, but that's yeah. a different story. Different topic, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks everyone for watching. You can follow Andrew on the Andrew Hines podcast or hit him up on Instagram. We'll put both of his links down below. Thank you.